Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Let's do 2020 and let's try building some sort of token deck. So we want rays, uh, no histories, no sapling migrations. We do get Trostani. We do get Loxodon. We do get March of the Multitudes. We do get Amara. I guess I should just look at the multicolor cards here. Uh, could play Flower Flourish. Could play the Iron Root Warlord as well from M20. And uh, there's a bunch of Planeswalkers that could fit in. A Jani, for example, could be okay. Here of Precinct 1 sounds interesting since we do have quite a few multicolor cards. So don't hate that idea as another two mana play that makes tokens. So let's try two Ajani's, two Warlords at least. Uh, not sure about the Flower Flourishes, but I guess if we're playing Hero, then Flower is actually pretty good. Because it's another multicolor spell to make a token with a Hero. So I'm kind of digging this. And then I guess we need some more like three and four mana plays, maybe some one drops to help us with Convoke. Woodland Champion. Don't know if uh, that's what we want here, since we're not actually all that interested in making one giant creature, we're more interested in going wide. But it does have some synergy. Divine Visitation could be okay as a one-off, but it's usually a bit to win more. Yeah, Hanged Executioner could be decent, Unbreakable Formation could be fine. Definitely want Tribunals as our removal. Don't know if we need all four or if like three is enough. We'll start with four. And then we don't probably don't need 24 lands with four flower flourish. So we can do like 22 lands, giving me a, a bit extra room to fit in some ones and some threes maybe. I think I do want some extra ones just to help me convoke out Loxodon on three. So could play the Enforcer, could play Witness. Those are the more appealing options. I don't hate the idea of Lauren Enforcer as it's a bit of additional interaction that maybe your deck lacks. So we're playing a Jani as our additional Anthem effect instead of Unbreakable Formation. Don't know if we want even more one drops. Not sure how good the Warlord actually is, but it is multicolor for Hero, which is nice. What about Pledge of Unity? Oh, that one. Yeah, it seems like a worse version of a Jani in a sense, because with a Jani we get a repeatable Pledge of Unity type effect. But yeah, I mean, the instant speed can be nice if the opponent doesn't expect it. Knight of Autumn could be good if there are a lot of artifacts and enchantments worth killing. It would definitely be a good sideboard option if we were playing uh, best of three. Yeah, I do like the fact that Warlord has five toughness, so it survives a lot of uh, the removal spells in standard nowadays. And it just hits pretty hard while also having the ability to make some tokens. So this could be an okay place to start. Uh, no Ambushers. I mean, Ambushers are a powerful card, of course. And it does synergize with Raise the Alarm and March of the Multitudes. But we're not taking full advantage of it, since we do want to tap out more often than not. But yeah, if we did have even more instants, then I guess Ambusher could be a thing, maybe as a sideboard card too. The mana base is pretty ugly, since we don't get any of the temples. I mean, at least we have Flower Flourish for fixing too. So now I have 14 whites. 12 green, and then flower to fix. Yeah, I mean, that's about right. I could maybe fit in one or, or two blossoming sands as well. Let's do two of those, giving me 15 white and 13 green. Do need more white than green. It's possible I can get away without uh, blossoming sands, but I'll, I'll start with two blossoming sands just to try it out. Uh, I don't think we have room for any fancy colorless lands, sadly. Otherwise, like a Karn's Bastion wouldn't be the worst since we have some plus one counter synergies. All right. And I guess this is a keep. And then hopefully we can find a third land at some point. Opponents on blue-green flash, presumably. 
Raise the alarm is a nice instance we can kind of use to play around counter spells. I did draw the land, so I could go raise into Loxodon. I don't mind like tapping out for a Mara or Hero here, since they don't have double blue for essence capture, so they would need Quench specifically to counter my two drop. And then the question is which two drop would I want to play first? I guess Amara makes some sense, just because if I Convoke I still get the token even if I counter the Convoke spell. But also Hero first makes sense since then we can play Amara afterwards to make a token. And this is on cast. So they did have the Quench. No double blue up, so would have to be another quench essentially to counter my next play, which again we could go for the race, but kind of dig playing Amara here. Like we could also wait to hit our land drops to play around quench so we don't have to play into it. But we also gotta make something happen before they get their ambusher synergies going. Alright, march. So I think I go for it, and then if they ambush me, I can at least tribunal it. And summon. Um, don't think I'm marching for one. Just replayed, I guess. Like, I could go for the raise instead to set up Loxodon, but I'm kind of just hoping to find a land. Enforcer, no double white sadly. Well, kind of the same play as last time. Now they could also have the Cutthroats to block my Amara. They could have Ambusher plus Counterspell. And now I guess we want to go for the end of turn Raise the Alarm since playing Enforcer is pretty mana inefficient. But we're probably going to see an Ambusher here. All right, Cutthroat instead, fair enough. And Grow Spiral. So I could erase now before they have blue mana up. Which is reasonable. Since I'm gonna wanna play this anyway. Could make the argument that I wouldn't mind getting this countered as opposed to maybe something else. But for Convoke, it's pretty important that we get these tokens in play. Opponent says go. Alright, second March. So now I guess we just want to leverage March instead of trying to Convoke the Loxodon. So I'm just gonna pass the turn now. Don't really want to get my Amara eaten alive here. And if they tap out for an Ambusher, I can maybe make something happen with the March. I'm gonna pass priority if they wanna activate Sailor, then I'll march. Ooh, Chemistry's Insight, that's unexpected. So I can march for four here. Like, I could have played the Larun Enforcer, and then I could have still marched for the same amount. But if they counter my Enforcer, then that's kind of awkward. So, I don't know. Alright, so I've got a bit of an army building up here, which is nice. But our opponent does have the card advantage now with the Sailor and the Chemisters. So we do need to make something happen. Still only three lands. So am I again just gonna say go and then wait for my opponent to tap out and march again? Could play hero and then still have a reasonable march. Yeah, let it resolve. I think I'm passing. So right now I could march for x equals 8 and get two more tokens, one from Amara, one from Hero. I think I'm doing this now, like they could have a sabotage, but don't want to let them draw into it if they don't have one in hand already. I can't play around Quench since I only have one land untapped. Alright, we'll do it for 8. Yeah, Convoke is kind of weird when it comes to playing around cards like Quench.
Alright, they had the sabotage anyway. Opponent says go, flower flourish. Just start making some more tokens here. Don't know if we're at the point yet where we can send everyone, but we're getting close. I could play Enforcer, Convoke Lockstone, Convoke Tribunal. Now the question is, what do I Tribunal? The Sailor or the Giant Cutthroats? And then uh, what do I put the counter on with Convoke? Probably not these two, since they're providing advantage anyway. Convoke all the lifelinkers. Don't think I'm attacking this turn, but then next turn I can attack. But our opponent packs it in. All right, sweet. So we managed to sneak in a couple march of the multitudes, or at least the first one. And then, um, yeah, that kind of gives us a strange way of generating additional mana, letting us double spell in the face of counter spells. And whenever you get to double spell against a counter spell heavy deck, you're in a good spot. And of course, some of our cards being instant speed, like March and Raise the Alarm, also helps. All right, so now we have a hand that's a little bit punished by this Blossoming Sands since it means I can't play Enforcer on 1, or if I play Enforcer on 1, I can't play my 2-drops. So we'll keep note of that. But uh, still, I think, a keeper. And then probably just play the Blossoming Sands turn 1. All right, Flower. So I could play Enforcer turn 1, and if I miss on a land, I can still play Sands plus Flower for another basic and get my mana sorted out. It's actually a pretty interesting decision, turn one here. But getting Amara in play on turn two and starting to make tokens is pretty important. So maybe I should just prioritize that for now. Well, if they have removal for Amara, the fairy would also be kind of bad. We're in trouble. Tyrant's Corn is kind of the worst case too. As I get to make a token. So, not looking great. Um, now that we have a fourth land, I don't even know if we want to play Flower. Probably better off saving it for Flourish. And this turn just play Enforcer into Raze. Don't think they're playing counter spells, so I'm just gonna end of turn the raise in case we can ambush the hero. Although given the double Ajanis, we kinda wanna keep as many creatures in play as possible. Ooh, second hero. I guess, let's see, I'm happy if I trade off my 2-2s two for their hero. And if they double block Laurel Enforcer, I'm not too upset. Like, I don't really want to trade off my creature since I have, like, multiple Ajanis to minus. But I don't think they're blocking. I don't know, let's find out. Alright, so that worked out. So our opponent's going off with heroes, making more tokens than the token deck. So definitely in trouble, although that's a good one. How about a main phase march followed by an Ajani minus? I think I dig that, because now attacking is not too profitable, so I don't think I want to be attacking first. So I can march for five. And 
and if I draw land I get to flourish, otherwise play another Johnny. If they have a Legion's End, then I'm gonna be sad. Thought Erasure instead. Now both of these tokens are called Soldier, so I'm pretty sure that a Legion's End would get both, even though this one doesn't have lifelink. Mortify the Enforcer. And Guard Mage can kill a Johnny. Yeah, opponent's got about as many tokens in play as we do. Like maybe the 3-3s three can attack. Don't know if I want to trade off my 2-2s. Two because then my Flourish becomes a lot less powerful if I eventually get to it. I think I just send those. And uh, I could cast Flower to play around another Thought Erasure, but I think I'm supposed to keep Flourish here. So yeah, cards we want to draw at this point. Trostani, another March of the Multitudes, Land for Flourish. Think the hero gets in there too. Yeah, it's an all. So they are killing the hero and then jumping. So yeah, our opponent's heroes of Precinct 1 have done a, a lot of work. This is definitely a matchup where they're pretty good since we don't have much removal. I know my responsibility. Take six. Oh, I've done the hero thing. All right, come on, top decks. That's not it. Yeah, the window is closing pretty quickly here for us to draw something. So I guess a 3-3 scan attack. I guess I'll go after Teferi. Bone still at 18. Alright. The third guard mage. And an oath. Alright, so now the game's pretty much over. Amara's not gonna save us anymore. I guess I'll play one more turn. Opponent had a free block on one of my 2-2s two with the Elite Guard Mage. So it didn't seem like an amazing attack with the 2-2s. Two but yeah, they've generated somewhere around 20 tokens with these heroes by now. Which is more than we made. I think I'm done here. We were in 0% to win that game, but pretty low. Alright. Reasonable hand. Bit heavy on the twos, so this is a hand that wouldn't mind having a one drop. So that's also something to keep in mind when building the deck. Maybe we should shave an Amara, maybe shave a hero, and make room for some additional ones to smooth out the deck a little bit. What to lead with against Temple of Epiphany? Not sure what deck we're playing against. Uh, let's assume my 2-drop dies, which one would I rather have killed? Probably the hero. 
since Amara can be pretty good combined with Convoke. And I get to make a token from the hero if I play Amara. So this looks like Jeskai control probably Planeswalkers, so they're probably going to have Deafening Clarion. Could have tried to play around it more by going for an end of turn Raze Alarm. Is the deck favored against anything? Hard to say, we're just trying it out, but uh, yeah, I mean, a token deck is going to be soft to sweeper effects, so controlling decks are usually not an amazing matchup unless we draw a lot of our instant speed spells and planeswalkers. Uh, other creature decks are usually a decent matchup because we can usually go over the top thanks to giant marches of the multitude. All right, shocks Emara makes it less likely that they're holding on to a clarion and ooh, it locks it on. So now we've got options, which is always a good thing. I can play Jani minus, which would be fine. I could go all in and go for raise the alarm into Loxodon. And then next turn play a Jani. Hope they don't have Clarion. But if they had Clarion, would they bother shocking Emara? Seems like they wouldn't. I mean, going Raze into Loxodon into a Jani gets in the most damage. So I think I'm going for it. Also gets Hero out of shock range in case they have another one. And at least a Loxodon survives Clarion. Let's slow this down. Let's try this. There's also something to be said for a Jani giving Vigilance combined with Convoke. Because if we did go and play the Jani last turn, then we could have attacked and still Convoked second main. So that's also worth pointing out. Well. All our cards are on the table here. We're not being very subtle. So this is 15 damage. I guess I should kill Teferi since an instant speed sweeper would be pretty painful. But yeah, pretty much. If they have a sweeper, we're probably dead. If they don't, we probably win. It also depends which sweeper it is. Is it if it's a five mana one, it kills everything. If it's a three mana one, maybe hero and Loxon survive. Yeah, there's also four mana sweeper, Solar Blaze, which also would have killed everything except I guess the Enforcer. Alright, well, they didn't have the sweeper. And we won. Turn 1 Enforcer, turn 2 Amara, turn 3 Loxodon. So that's showing the importance of having a couple of 1-drops to help us with Convoke. Ooh, Tristani. Could be a nice curve stopper. Yeah, Clarion plus Expansion Explosion is also a good one to keep in mind. I remember getting wrecked a while back by... Uh, it was uh, Fairy Cannonade plus Expansion dealing 4 damage out of nowhere. Alright, so is this a Feather deck? Is this a more controlling deck? We do have a Conclave Tribunal's interaction at least. Alright, Jeskai again. Alright, let's see if we can dodge a Clarion to Fairy. So that's going to slow us down quite a bit. Since we were on the draw this time. What decks do I think are looking strong after rotation? Well, we'll find out uh, on uh, Tuesday during the Early Access event. Get to find out firsthand. The Fairy Plus, which is kind of scary. So yeah, Amara gets to attack. And then I can still Convoke out Loxodon. Or I can Tribunal the Teferi. Saving Tribunal for a scarier Planeswalker, like, let's say, a Sarkon, could be pretty important too. So I don't think I'm supposed to Tribunal to Ferry, but uh, 
I can attack with Amara. But at least now we got a Loxodon in place, so if they do have a Clarion, they'll be forced to minus the Ferry to get rid of it. Which is still not a great exchange for us. I've got it. Right, the Ferry pluses again. So now I should also keep Justice Strike in mind. That's a way for them to kill my Loxodon at instant speed too. I could send... Just a Loxodon at the ferry. If they have a Justice Strike, they get to save the ferry. I could send a Loxodon, Emara, and a 2 2 token, or Enforcer and a 2 2 token. Three creatures at the ferry, so it dies for sure. I can set up a March of the Multitudes if I just send a Loxodon, because then I could march for three. But I guess raising first makes more sense. I could raise and march for three, and then have five tokens in play, which is pretty appealing too. And then if I draw land, the Johnny's going to be pretty devastating. Not sure here, there's a lot of options. I feel like I do this. And this. And then save the rest for Convoke. Also, an acute interaction to keep in mind is Enforcer. Can uh, tap down our own Amara to make a token in some board states. No, the ferry down. Could still see an end of turn clarion for all we know. Yeah, there it is. So no point in convoking a response since we don't get to float the mana. If we can find a land for the Sajani, we could still be okay. Flower, not quite. So March would be for three. I can play Flower first. Loxalon can attack Kazmina, opponent chumps. And that's one fewer creature I can tap for Convoke. So it would only be for two then. At which point it probably isn't worth it anymore. And then maybe I should just attack everyone at Kazmina. And if they want to eat a 1-1, one, one, I get to kill Kazmina. Otherwise she can no longer minus 2. And against the Planeswalker deck, it's important to keep the Planeswalkers in check. Because even a Planeswalker at 1 loyalty is still pretty annoying if they draw Sarkon, for example. But we did make sure to keep Tribunal to kill Sarkon. Alright, they do let Kazmina go. Alright, so not the most exciting turn. But next turn I get to maybe play Jani, maybe Trostani with another land. Prison Realm, sure. So now a Jani is not too appealing. So I want to make sure to keep some pressure on the board so that if they do go Sarkon make a dragon, I can maybe Tribunal the dragon instead of having to Tribunal Sarkon. Alright, well, punished for the Blossoming Sands yet again. I guess a Jani Plus is fine here. Could also Tribunal the Prison Realm, but that seems unexciting. And March for 2 also doesn't do much. Dead a Dovin's Veto anyway, so... Fair enough. Alright, next turn I get to play Trostani. Token attacks, sure. Like, we have the tools in hand to potentially get there. It's just a question whether or not our opponent finds another sweeper. I think I still prefer going Trostani into March. If 
if I attack my token at Kazmina opponent blocks, could be good if they end up killing Trostani, because then I traded a 1-1 one, one for a 2-2, two, two. but it's kind of bad given the march in hand, so I think I'm just gonna chill. Yeah, I guess Tribunal doesn't cost two more because it's an ETB effect and not an actual spell we're casting, so yeah, it doesn't cost two more because of Kazmina, but still, I don't really want a Tribunal Kazmina, even though she's kind of annoying. Since we're only targeting something the moment uh, Tribunal enters the battlefield. Don't think I'm marching for two. So we've got some powerful top decks here. Another Tribunal's not bad. So one play I could make is main phase March of the Multitudes for X equals, let's see, seven. And then still play Tribunal afterwards, exiling Mu. This play is bad if my opponent has another Sweeper in hand. Otherwise, it's reasonable. Alright, and now we just go to top deck, more Anthem effects, and hope to dodge a Sweeper. Narset's gonna dig pretty deep to find an answer. Alright, they're deciding, finds Lava Coil, so that can kill my Trostani, which is also pretty effective. Well, that's a good draw. So we've got 10 tokens, opponent's got 3 blockers, so 7 times 321, so our opponent's dead. Bam! Sweet! Alright, so we went 3-1 uh, and one with our green-white tokens here. Any closing remarks? Did get punished uh, at least once pretty badly by having the Blossoming Sands, so it's possible those should just be more basics. Uh, Warlord would have been a reasonable draw in multiple board states, I think. The Flower Flourish was pretty key, both halves were used and were definitely very useful. I liked having a couple of one drops to help with Convoke. The Enforcer just giving us a bit more interaction also plays well with Amara, since we can tap our own Amara to make a token if we can't attack or Convoke. Probably have enough multicolor for Hero to be decent, but if we were to cut a two drop I would either shave an Amara since she's legendary or I would shave a couple heroes uh, to make room for maybe some more one drops or some more three drops. But overall I was pretty happy with the deck. I'm interested to see where uh, green-white tokens will end up after rotation. Haven't really paid too much attention to the Eldraine token-related cards. I guess I can have a quick look here. Like the Harmonious Archon is definitely interesting since that can turn all our 1-1s into 3-3s. Three so that's a card that could potentially fit into this archetype. Yeah, the Lovestruck Beast makes a 1-1 one -one and then makes a 5-5. Five -five. It's an option, like the fact that the 5-5 five five can pretty reliably attack, since we have so many 1-1 one -one tokens, is uh, kind of nice. But if we pump the 1-1, one -one, then I'm not sure if the Lovestruck Beast can still attack. So it could be awkward with uh, Anthem effects. Yeah, I'm not seeing a ton of great options, like maybe the Glass Casket as a 2-mana removal spell could be good enough. Similar to Baffling Ants in the past. That's always a card that could sneak its way into the deck. The Ranger makes a bunch of tokens. Four Celestia Hybrid for a 2-2 creature that has an adventure for four hybrid mana, making two 1-1s, one and then can tap to give our creatures plus one plus one until end of turn. I don't know if it's good enough. It's pretty expensive for the ability. So while it does fit into a token deck, I'm not sure if it's uh, quite 
good enough for constructed. There is Castle Ardenvale, which is one of the rare lands that's for mana tap to make a 1-1 one, one white human token. So that's definitely uh, an option. So I guess among the lands, that's the one that stands out the most. All right, so overall, not getting too many new toys in Eldrain for tokens, but the deck as is is still quite powerful, so could still be a player in the new standard. But I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.